Hi folks, Master Chef Pork Chop coming to you from the Little Blackstone. I'm out here cooking up some Italian hot sausages on the little grill. Yes, I call it a grill. I don't call it a griddle because it's a grill. You know, whoever went to Waffle House they never heard a person called a griddle operator. Their title is grill operator. And whenever you got a flat top grill, that means you're a grill operator. Whether you're cooking on the flat top or whether you're cooking over fire, it's a grill. Some folks have a uh, an unjust opinion about that, and which is good indeed because. You can have your opinion, just like anybody else. But my opinion is, it's a flat top grill. I'm cooking some Italian hot rotwurst on it right now. And I got some steaks right here that are going on it. And I'm fixing a pan over here and let you see these puppies. Look at there, folks. Look at those puppies. And they are puppies because they are barking. Arr! Look at there how thick. Those things are over about an inch and a quarter thick or a little better. There's two, almost almost three pounds of ribeye right there. Or New York strip. Sorry about that. Pardon me. I got a little squirrely on my, my on my description there. But yeah, that's them New York strip. I got them sitting there. And uh, waiting on these brats to cook. And uh, they'll be done here in a little bit. And I'm gonna toss these, toss these New York strips on there, and uh, put a good crust on them. I got them, I got them rubbed down with some some rub and some of my secret rub that I'll be marking in there for before before shortly. I'm uh, still waiting on some supplies. I got all my bottles and my stuff in, and uh, so then the uh, next thing I do is. Uh, get my supplies and get them all done and uh, I can I already got my store set up so they'll be available in the store I will have uh, two different kinds of rubs and two different kinds of sauces I'm gonna have a sweet tangy Caroline uh, gold sauce and a uh, hot and spicy Georgia red sauce Got a Georgia Gold and a Georgia Red that I'm going to be representing. And no, it ain't got nothing to do with football either because I don't have nothing to do with footballs. Uh, in my in my spices, I've got one that's butt-kicking butt rub that it's already, uh, I've already done, got it, got it perfected. And I'm working on the other one right now. But uh, yeah, i got two spices that's coming and two, and two sauces that's coming. So, all right, folks. I'll catch you back here in a short. I got the cornbread dealer. She's sitting over here reading her papers today. And uh, we got the citronella candle going and got the bug zapper going to keep all them varmints away from this good smelling food. Alrighty. Master Chef Pork Chop. Catch you back in a short. Thank you now. Alright folks. Master Chef Pork Chop back at you. Coming live once again from the Little Blackstone. Folks, I want y'all to check these out. Look at those bad boys. Check that out right there. Look at that marbling on that beautiful New York strip. What's this?
just want to put just a little light sear on them. Just on the fat cap, just a little bit. And then throw them on. Never use a fork or any kind of flipper other than a set of tongs or a flipper. Never poke your meat until it's time to pull a temp. This is a meat, this is a in, internal meat thermometer. This is what you use to check your doneness. A lot of people check the doneness by the, by the touch of their hand, whether it's medium or medium well or medium rare or whatever. I still like to use a thermometer. Take this meat will be about 120 when it comes off of the grill. I'm just doing a sear on it right now on both sides. And then I'll turn the grill back down. I got her screaming hot right now. She's as hot as she gets, folks. She's about 400 and 430 degrees. You see that? See that good stuff coming out of there? I've done rubbed them down once with my secret rub. This here's in. I put this in a Publix bottle, but it has. This has got my secret rub in it. I can only not tell you what it is because if I did I'd have to shoot you in the foot but I'm going to add a little more of this to it folks I want y'all to know that cornbread dealer is behind the camera tonight and she is doing a magnificent job of filming these here well thank you very much Master Chef Porkchop I have one of the best a uh, photo journalist in the business here working with me tonight. Video journalist. Video journalist. I call it photo journalist, video journalist. It's the same thing. Because those who, so. those who work in the news call them photo journalists and video journalists. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Matt, uh, cornbread beaver. But, uh, these here has been on for about two minutes now. And so, I'm going to do a, a flip. Look at that crust on there, folks. Look at that, folks. That right there would make a puppy full of freight trains. Make a diesel, make a diesel take a dirt road. I'm going to add a little more season to this side. This stuff is good, good, good. This is one of my products that I'm going to be marketing. Is that this, just a container of this, brown sugar? No, it's not a container. This is what I had brown sugar in at one time. But mm -hmm. uh, I can, if Cornbread Diva wants to shoot a uh, shoot a picture of it. Here, let the camera smell that. Can you smell it there? Mm. I can't put it up there too close because I might have somebody that might, might decipher it and tell me what, and tell what it is. Mm. It's a secret. I don't know about that. You got enough spices in there. I don't think you could replicate that from yeah. just looking at it. But it's a secret, folks. Mm. Look at that. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna dry out one of my my brand new weight here, and I'm gonna let it sit in there for a little bit to help, help with that caramelization. There's one thing about cooking on the flat top: you got to have it makes you makes you have excellent caramelization. By the way, that's a Kingsford weight. It's not a black. It's not a Blackstone weight. I had this long before I got a, before I got a Blackstone. <laughs> but it's a very good weight. Great for bacon. Great for steaks.
missed up a shot. Huh? You missed up a shot. Oh, okay. Sorry, Beaver. <laughs> That's funny. Pardon me, Diva. Mm -hmm. See if people are paying attention. Mm hmm. Can you iron with that thing? You probably could. You could iron your shorts or your butt covers or whatever you call them. <laughs> and uh, all you'd have to do is heat it up on the flat top and hmm. and run them across it. Look at that. A multifunctional tool, folks. Mm -hmm. a multifunctional tool, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, folks. We're getting uh, pretty much well in time right now. So uh, we want to keep our segment short because we have a... Uh, our video editor doesn't like us uh, having long, long drawn out video. So. But anyway, you see these right here. These Jim Dandy to the rescue. Jim Dandy to the rescue. <laughs> Go Jim Dandy. Go Jim Dandy. Alrighty. I'm going to let these puppies here about, give them about uh, five minutes. Because they're about a, like I said, an inch and a half thick. So, hey, they're going to be just right. Believe me, I will post pics, and I will probably do a little short snippet video of me cutting into these puppies after they get after they get rested. Because they got to rest for rest for about 10 minutes before we, before we cut them. But we do have some sausages here to eat on, and some tater tots to go in the oven pretty soon. But anyway, folks, you saw it here on the Little Blackstone. From the Master Chef Pork Chop and the Cornbread Diva, along with our little girls out there in the yard, Sarah Bell and Doug Doug. But uh, these steaks are going to be one fine day. Alrighty, y'all guys take care. God bless. Like and subscribe, because we love you and we need you. Take care. Yeah, folks, Master Chef Pork Chop back at you. Look at here, folks. Check this out. Check out that beautiful steak. Mm -mm -mm. That's just one of them. This is the second one. And this is the juices that was that came from those steaks. That's how you tell there's a good product. That's called myoglobin. That's not blood called myoglobin. It is a byproduct of a good cooked steak. And this right here is what you're looking for. Look at there how look at how look how pretty. Perfectly perfectly cooked. There ain't nothing wrong with eating a steak that looks like that. That's fantastic. No doubt about it, folks. All right. Master Chef Pork Chop. Wanted to let you see what it looked like. And uh, we'll be uploading this and uh, putting it together. And we'll catch y'all a little bit later on. Hope you enjoyed this little short video. Wasn't a long one. It's just a little steak video. It shows you how to sear a steak and how to, how to cook a steak. Just like they should be cooked. And... Uh, we have fork and then knife in hand. This is a top quality Cuisinart chef knife. And that's what I use all the time for doing my, doing my stuff. Alrighty. Thank you much. Master Chef Pork Chop and the Cornbread Diva. We're out. <laughs>